Chapter 9.6 and 9.7 is dealing with the counting principle and probability. And if any of you have studied probability, you know that that is um, just a look at your desired outcomes divided by all possible outcomes. So as a, as a study of all possible outcomes or as a study of probability, what we need to do is this objective right here, be able to calculate how many possible outcomes are there to ever try to calculate and tackle probability. So we have these different tools, something that we call the counting principle, permutation calculations, and combination calculations. These are different tools to help us calculate how many possible outcomes there are in a situation. So in this section, we're really going to be analyzing situations for the need of which one of these tools to calculate the possible outcomes. So go ahead and consider these following situations. You do not have to write them down yet. But it's something, I mean, look at number one, for example. Just consider these. You're in this movie, and you're trying to break into this mad scientist's lab, and there's this code that's five digits from zero to nine. What if you just kind of did the beep, 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 and had those five digits that you typed in? What is the probability in that movie that you just entered into that lab then? What is the probability that that's going to break it? Um, same thing here, just note the situations, try to analyze these, what's going on, and make some mental notes of the differences between all of these situations. Alright, so probability, um, here it's just kind of a more, um, more in-depth study of that idea that probability is your desired outcomes divided by all possible. So you can kind of just see here, you have to understand that we're looking at a set of what you want divided by the set of all that there are. So that's what this definition is saying. So again, in order to ever tackle probability, we really need to figure out how many outcomes are in that sample set, which was on that denominator, that what we're used to as all possible outcomes. So the very first tool that we have for calculating all possible outcomes is what we call the counting principle or the fundamental counting principle. And this is in your books. But let's say that you have many events going on, um, such as trying to break this code. So, I mean, you have five different opportunities to be filling in these numbers. And each one of those opportunities we're going to call an event. So um, let E sub 1 and E sub B t be two events. I actually have E sub 5 all the way up to E sub 5 here because I have five events. So the first event has how many different ways? Well, this first event from 0 to 9, we have 10 different ways that we could have completed event 1. Event 2, we also have 10 different ways, 10 different ways, 10 different ways, and 10 different ways. So really, what this amounts to being is the possible outcomes, we're going to multiply them together according to this fundamental counting principle. That's what this is saying. So we are going to have 10,000 different ways that you could have that code. So, I mean, just think about this event one. I don't remember what I guessed, but what if I had like 11520, for example? Um, these right here, this code, would it have broken it? Well, the probability that that one was right out of this 10,000 is one ten thousandths. So I did not have a very good probability whatsoever of breaking that code. But it's doable. All right, permutation. So now here is another tool. We figured out how to look at a situation like our situation number one, where you have multiple events and you have a different um, event for each one, or you'd have a different amount of ways for each one. So now let's look at permutations. A permutation um, is an event where you're trying to have a certain amount of elements and you're trying to order those elements. So here is our notation for it. Okay, And again, if you were just to say, what is... Um, what is a permutation? A permutation is just a different ordering. But then we have this certain permuta permutation calculation where you have a situation where you have a total number of elements and you're trying to choose a certain number of those. And what, how many different orders 
could that go down? So the calculation here, again, we have our notation. So we have, let's say, um, five, like here, we have five people, and we want to choose five people. How many different ways could this combination occur? So using this calculation, you have five factorial divided by, and then here I took my five minus five, so zero factorial. This amounts to being, well, I have it, 120, because if you go ahead and type that into your calculator, but don't forget that came from doing five times four times three times two times one, okay? This thing right here, we're going to have five, oh, five factorial, because that's how many we had to choose from. This is our number to choose cho chosen from. And then we're going to have 5 minus 2, so 3 factorial. So in other words, this is 5, uh, sorry, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, all over 3 times 2 times 1. But if you can remember back to some of our factorial calculations, there's some cancellation that's going to go on here, and we're just going to have 5 times 4. So I want you to go ahead and write down those examples and definitions and then apply it to this situation right here. So this is that situation where you had five runners of equal ability. How many different ways can first and second place be awarded? What is that probability that the place, um, placement will be A is first and B is second? So let's go ahead and try to kind of pawn this out here. We have five runners, A, B, C, D and E. So the idea is we have first place and second place to fill. So how many different ways could that happen? Well, if they're all of equal events or all of equal um, uh, ability, in this first spot, we have one, two, three, four, five different people, right? So let's say that A went in there. So let's say that A did achieve first. So now in the second place, how many different how many different possibilities are there to fill this second slot? Well, now there's one, two, three, four people left, right? So it's just going to be four different people could fill second. So this goes right along with that counting probability. So here, what we have is um, 20, mm -hmm. which is exactly what... Uh, I hope I did... Um, simplify this in my last slide, but that should have been 20 because we would have had 5 factorial over 3 factorial, right? And then what we would have had when we canceled off down to 3 was 5 times 4. So I hope I wrote 20. Okay, but if I didn't, here it is. So that was exactly this. 5 choose 2 people. There was a possibility of 20 different ways for that to happen. So here, I mean, you could have had a B, C, D, or E as first place. And then think about this. Um, you would have B, C, D, or E left. And this one, you would only have A, C, D, E. This one for other options. This one for other options. This one for other options. So all the possibilities of having first and second, I mean, we could have had A, B. We could have had A, C, A, D. AE as our placements, or B could have came in first, A could have came in second, right? So all of these are our different possibilities as well. So now to answer what is the probability that the placement will be A is first and B is second, there's only one out of these 20. So the probability of that event is going to be 1 20th. Okay, again, the biggest part was calculating how many possible outcomes are there. This one you should be very familiar with. We tackled it in the last section when we were doing the coefficients of our expanded bi binomials. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this, again, this is just the combination calculations. And again, this is where order does not matter. So you're choosing, you're selecting from a group of a certain amount of elements, and order doesn't matter. You're just trying to figure out what are the different combinations. So don't forget, we do have an example here, um, and we worked out these in the last, the last PowerPoint, and we were using this calculation now. So the very last situation that we had in our um, beginning slide was, again, there are those five runners, and this time we just want to bring two people to districts. It doesn't really matter 
like the, the placement of our runners, we're just going to bring the top two. So this one, the order doesn't matter, and if you went back to that um, idea that, hey, we could have had A, B, C, D, E, the idea would be that um, we would have some overlap here, B, C, D, E, right? So A and B could have gone, A and C could have gone, A, D, A, E could have gone. So now here's the thing. We're going to have to use a different calculation than what we just used because a here this would be c d e this thing right here and this thing right here are the same right i mean if a and b go versus b and a go student b and a versus student a and b that's the same since order does not matter in this situation order does not matter the idea is we can't use the same kind of permutation calculation that we, we use in situation two because these are, I mean, of our total outcomes, these aren't the same. So, or these are the same. So that's when we would have to use that different calculation for this is a situation that we have five players and we're going to have a combination of two. And that's when we're going to have to use that as that n factorial all over n minus r factorial times r factorial. So we're going to have 5 factorial over and then 5 minus r, so 5 minus 2. I'm seeing n minus r is 5 minus 2. So that's our 3 factorial times and then 2 factorial. So this, be care very careful, there's no rule that we can just go ahead and add these or multiply these or whatever you might try to do. I would go ahead and expand these out or um, simplify it on your calculator. But here I'm going to use my definitions to the fullest, 3, 2, 1, times 2, times 1. So these definitely cancel out, these cancel out, and then these are going to reduce, so I'm just going to have 2. So there are 10 different ways, 10 different combinations that these could be going. So here, if I looked at my table, what is the probability that A and B will go? So here's A, and here's our BA. So there are two out of the 10 all overall uh, possibilities. I'm sorry, those count as one. So here, A and B, A and B and A go, so there's one out of 10 as our probability. Um, there's your practice. We will be working on that tomorrow, so good luck.